So Nalene is is trying to connect at the moment. There's just some technical issues, so bear with me. But it is happening. It's definitely happening. Um, hope we get some cool questions because I'm pretty interested in this topic, but um, with my limited skills, maybe I won't have the best questions myself. Hello. Ah, hello, Nalene. How are you? Sorry, I was struggling yeah. with, the, with the technical bits, and I think now you can hear me clearly. Yeah, you're coming through loud and clear. Um, Beautiful. I, I introduced you. Uh, I hope I, I didn't butcher your your impressive title. Um, Nalin Asanka Gemagadra <laughs> Arakchilage. Yeah, that's right. That's a perfect. Uh, um, Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. I'll, that's like my, my win for the day. Cool. Um, so you'll be talking about uh, evaluating the usability of security APIs and uh, you're a senior research fellow at La Trobe University. That's correct. So Sweet, I'll just, I'll just let you take it away. I, yeah, that'd be awesome. So I need to share the slides. I think I'm trying to, I, I did last time, so I'm, I'm trying to find a way to, um, is, uh, I'm going to do it. Yeah, click on that and uh, oops. So, do you know how can I share the slides here from this? Uh, yeah, so okay. just down the bottom of your screen, I think it's just the little screen share uh, monitor icon. Yeah, okay, the monitor. One. Okay, great, awesome. And then usually there'll be a little box that'll pop up. Um, you might need to hide it after your. Your yep. share has started. You share. So would you be able to see that? Um, yep, I think that should be coming through okay for the audience as well. Yep, that looks that's looking good. Yeah, so you can see the, the presentation now. Yep, that seems to be working fine. Beautiful. Nice, so, I'll drop. Awesome, um, so uh, you can see the first slides and um, the evaluating the usability of security APIs. Is it is that ready to go? Uh, yep, yep, that's all looking good. You've got a full screen slide share, looks perfect. Yeah, and also you can see myself as well. Yep, you're, you're still there, yeah. Beautiful, right. Um, hi folks, um, sorry for the uh, couple of minutes. Late delay, and my name is Nalin Asanka Gamagadarachlagi. Today, I'm going to present uh, evaluating the usability of security APIs because we are using usability uh, security APIs to ask getting software developers to embed security into their applications. So, we use uh, security APIs, but then uh, they find it quite difficult for them to because they are not security experts. Uh, software developers, software developers are you know, are, are uh, capable of getting those functionalities implemented into the systems. Um, the the high-tech organizations like who develop security APIs, they can afford to have uh, software developers with the expertise of usability and social science and, and, and kind of things. But um, small to medium scale organizations, particularly, they are um, they are going to be you know there is a huge failure in this case when they are asked. There's engineers asked to implement security APIs into the application. So uh, use security API when they're uh, developing secure systems. So they find it quite difficult because they are not, they find it so difficult to use existing security API because the usability issues. So I'm going to talk about what we have done in the past uh, through my research group and what we can bring onto the table to help um, the designers of security APIs, so uh, to better design systems, uh, security APIs uh, uh, with usability in mind, some software developers without security knowledge who are using that, having that thing in mind. So coming back to secure coding, secure programming issues, this is a huge problem that Australian government um, urge uh, security experts, you know, the, uh, and also websites to and apps to adhere to new security standards. But one of the problems when, when they say that every website, when they used a secure hatching algorithm as SHA-1, they need to be able to upgrade to SHA-2. But SHA, uh, sorry, um, uh, so they have to upgrade. But in that case, they mention at the down, so SHA-1. SHA-1 has been already deprecated. 
um, and people find it difficult to, but the software engineers, they don't have any idea about it. So when a lot of people talk about when there is a security box, what they do is they go to Stack Overflow and try to find um, the problems, try, try, try to find the first you know, thing, you know, they copy and paste onto the applications and, you know, they implement uh, uh, the security mechanism into the uh, current application that they are working on. Um, and there is, security is not transparent, so they might not be able to test it uh, and how, what happens um, behind the computer, underneath the, the coding. So in that case, that sort of failure also would lead them to uh, uh, open up the back door for the cyber, cyber attackers where they can sneak into the systems and sec they are not security experts they will find the code from st you know from on online and then copy and paste onto the existing program and when they are writing so if the code has got a little bit of bug like SHA-1 instead of SHA-2 because SHA-1 is highly likely to come up in the Google hit because they talk about a lot uh, about the security vulnerabilities and uh, when they ask to implement, you know, when it's been deprecated, so and they introduce uh, SHA-2 instead of SHA-1. So people always make mistakes through this with the lack of, um, because of having a lack of uh, security skills. So the context of this program, what we have investigated is, as I mentioned that earlier, programmers make mistakes when they when implementing security APIs. So that introduces, that opens up the bad zone for um, security vulnerability into applications that they developed. So unfortunately, we can't blame on engineers who are designing and developing systems, um, particularly secure systems, because they don't have such as resources, methodologies, tools, techniques to uh, help them develop um, or use security APIs uh, and develop software that perceive uh, that, that protect uh, security, that perceive security. And what we did was we developed a cognitive dimension framework based usability evaluation method to empirically evaluate the usability of security APIs. So we developed this method, cognitive uh, dimension framework, which consists of 15 um, items. And then we wanted to evaluate this. We initially ask uh, software, we get software developers to interact with the four different APIs. I'm not going to talk about all of them today, but I'm only talking about just a bouncy castle, lightweight cryptography. But we also investigated Google Authentication API, Java Secure Socket Extension, OWSP Enterprise Security API. Even OWSP uh, Enterprise Useful Security API, they contacted us, um, our research groups, and um, we have so significantly contributed to um, change their architecture about the, the usability issues, particularly the documentation and Java documentation related to that, to uh, helping software developers to better embed uh, security into the application, implement security into the application using uh, OWSP Enterprise Security API. But for, for, for due to the time limit that I've got, I'm only going to talk about the issues which we have identified, bouncy calls a lightweight crypto API, and uh, we will talk about then why, how we introduce the cognitive dimension framework uh, for um, uh, um, uh, uh, so for API, so both people like we can use the cognitive dimension framework to evaluate the usability of security API. But on the other hand, API designers, the developers can use our um, CDF, cognitive dimensions framework um, element uh, to design, better design security API that are more usable. And when we get software developers interacted into these four different um, APIs, we have encountered, we have identified over 83% uh, percent, um, of usable security usability issues that lead to a massive security failure. So this is one of the papers that we have co-authored with my uh, student, um, and we it's a usability evaluation of bouncy castle hashing, hashing that I'm going to talk about today. And in this work, uh, as, as, as I mentioned, we evaluated the usability of S-script password hashing functionality of Bouncy Castle. We get 10 programmers um, and ask them to interact, uh, you know, develop a, an application using S-script, using uh, you know, implementing secret hashing 
uh, stuff into their application. Um, uh, it took literally around two hours to get that implemented. Uh, and, you know, we asked them to, you know, you have to develop an application, a secure password, uh, storage solutions using Bouncy Calls and Library. That's what we mentioned. And we gave a code snippet um, and we wanted him to go through and fix and implement it. So we identified 63 usability issues across the 10 programmers which we have used. Um, uh, existing a script implementation of Bouncy Calls and API. Each participant reported an average of 15 usability issues that could lead to a massive security failure. Furthermore, um, we expected that this work provide a guidance uh, also we to, uh, to to better design API um, with usability, having usability in mind, as well as security in mind, both usability and security in mind, which helped software developers to uh, embed security into the application, implement security into the applications. So the issues that we have identified, the selected method parameter for S script generate method invocation. So, so we asked them to use S script. The reason that we asked them to use S script is more secure. That's what we found from the literature and other sources, the documentations that we have referred to. Um, and also, so the, the key thing that we have asked, so when they are providing you know, parameters to S script, uh, if the parameters use weak values, so the interface is always in you know, a already ITE integrated development environment that they are presented with. If they provide, um, because you can see the byte values, if they use weak values for those parameters, um, the security of the password storage will be weak and it will be vulnerable to those attacks. And also you might find there is no point of using if that input value, if there is no input output validation in there uh, provided by the uh, IT integrated development environment, there is no point of using sort value and because sort provides the protection against the dictionary and pre-computed rainbow attacks. And also people are quite confused about using um, byte or array versus string to store password, the costing stuff happening and string password will be stored in memory. You know that unless you explicitly invoke the garbage collector, it wouldn't delete that. So if you store that information, there still will be there, those information. So um, the issues observed about the documentation of Bouncy Causal API. So when Bouncy Causal API created, we all know about they developed the documentations, um, including the Java doc as well. And then uh, this is a huge problem. So the issues that we are going to observe through the documentation, uh, they are not um, 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 and this is a problem with OWSP as well at some point, and this is a problem with pretty much every documentation that we have. The documentations are written by expert uh, 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 programmers or, or, or technical people, and then when it comes to non-technical people, they might find it difficult to, or novice uh, people, they find it difficult to read and understand uh, given the fact, given the little information that is provided in there. And also we have explored the other observation issues as well. As I mentioned that earlier, this is not just the, uh, uh, this is the highlighted issue that we have identified through the Bouncy Castle um, API. But if you look at the overall Java socket layer, Secure Circuit Layer API, Bouncy Castle API, and OWSP Enterprise uh, API, as well as Google Authentication API, we have totally identified about each 24, 15, 16, 12 um, uh, um, issues, uh, the usability issues that could make a significant contribution, significant failure uh, uh, to leave the back door open for the open for the cyber attacks uh, for the for the. Uh, uh, Programmers. So, and cyber attacks are always trying to leverage their attacks, understanding vulnerabilities, understanding uh, weaknesses of programmers' behavior, so they can sneak into the systems. So then, what we did was we developed a cognitive dimension. We formed actually a cognitive dimension framework for security APIs. So the framework which we talked about, which consists of um, the abstraction level. So, and when we design and develop APIs, um, and it's, it provides uh, abstraction, and will they be able to understand and adapt into their task? 
you know, given the little information in the document provided with that, uh, whatever in this case, bouncy console, um, uh, lightweight cryptographic API. So can we do that? Can is it usable for so software developers? Because software developers are not security experts, but when we are providing them to implement security mechanisms um, through the use of security APIs, they always find it, you know, quite challenging and difficult. So is it, and also learning style, what about before starting to use the API and also how programmers would gain knowledge about the API and its security background. And they need to go and read a lot of other work to be able to understand. What about learning styles and have we provided, have we developed the documentations, uh, specification, having that in mind and also working framework. So they also need to be able to understand the, the developer's working framework, the size of the conceptual chunk, the developer's working set and need to work effectively. And also work step unit. How much of programming task um, must or can be completed in a single step? So we are providing a, a lot of, um, a, a, but there are a lot of you know small chunkable forms, and how much of them are going to complete, and is it uh, possible to use security APIs to implement that? Progressive evaluations. You know, once you you know getting them, you know, getting the um, uh, security API implemented into the applications. You know, this and would you be able? To, how would you? Because we don't we don't have any error message or alerts to, or uh, directions. You know, sort of a guiding you to. Have uh, uh, having a milestone um, to through the error message uh, providing you with a successful uh, implementations and once you uh, implement it, I'll talk about later. So you should be able to test it whether or not you have successfully embedded uh, the APIs, security APIs, into the applications as well. And so that's a huge part. And um, premature commitments, the amount of decision that developer has to make when writing code for given scenario, this is a huge. The, it's solely based on the individual's developers' uh, 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 knowledge and experience, and the consequences of those decisions are countless, and we might not be able to evaluate. And we need to take into their mental models as well, because if it's an experienced one, if it is non-experienced one, so they might act quite differently. And even the experienced people might do little mistakes, which opens up the back door for the attacks because they are not security experts. And penetrability, how the API facilitates explorations and how do we dig, in, dig deeper into that? And they might not be able to understand how the analysis, the exploitation analysis and understanding of each its component and its security related information, particularly how that security mechanism works, mechanism works in that. And the way targeted developers should go about retrieving what is needed. So not getting everything, but what is needed. So it should reflect with the task that they are trying to complete with. And API elaboration, the extent to which the API must be adopt adapted to meet the need of the target developers. If you have to develop X, Y, Z uh, task, and would you be able to, um, uh, how would you elaborate the API, uh, how, through the API, and the, your task, the extent to which the API must be adapted, uh, the, main, the need of your implementing that particular task. And API viscosity, um, uh, the, the barriers to change the inherent in API. So uh, you might not be able to customize, and how much effort a targeted developer needs to expand, um, expand to make the, such a changes. And also the consistency. So, and when you're developing an application, how much of the rest of the API can be inferred once a part of its learned? And, you know, listen, learn from one API, how can you apply to the next one? So, because otherwise he needs to go and learn pretty much everything. So do we have sort of a consistency among all the other security APIs and why not? And we need to do sort of a understanding um, about how people are interacting with the different types of APIs and when they're asked to implement different security mechanisms or the techniques into the applications. In that case, the consistency should be there. Then they have the mental model when they started developing. So we need to take into consideration, particularly when we um, uh, when security API designers, when they're asked to design security APIs where people can use. And the role of 
um, expressivenessness and uh, how apparent the relationship between is between each components of exposed by an API and the program as the whole. So that is the overall um, idea that the, they, they should be able to understand. And the, finally, we also need to understand the domain correspondence. How clearly the API components map to the domain and any special tricks that the developer needs to be aware of to complete accomplish some functionality. So, um, what is what is the uh, what is the techniques? What what clear, what are the, the the API components mapped to the a particular domain and reflecting on the uh, the task that they are given and any tricks that they need to um, get on board and also hard to misuse. So you when software developers are using APIs, uh, security APIs particularly. So the security API should provide a mechanism uh, to minimize the mistakes um, while incorporating, using those API into the programming uh, uh, task to, to, to get the security implemented into the software systems. And also it should provide to identify the potential mistakes for example, providing some sort of security alerts. And they, these are the alerts. These are the alerts that you're going to get rather than waiting to the end, rather than providing, okay, you have incorrect, unsuccessfully or incorrectly uh, uh, incorporated security API at the end of the day, because it doesn't tell us about specific problems. So they find it, but you know, we need to have different systematic guide guidance so that makes them hard to make mistakes and also end user protection. They also should be able to understand why do I need to use this security APIs? And how can I protect end user um, uh, through this API? How much does the security of the end user of an application develop using API depends on the programmer or who develop the application and testability, but the security, both security and privacy are um, um, trans not transparent to the end user. So, and they should be able to test it because when we use um, whatever the API, like a secure socket layer, or, um, um, bounce parcel API, or WSP uh, enterprise API, so they should be able to test it and see the functionality. It's not just, okay, you have successfully embedded. You can successfully embed it into the application, but still you might use like, you know, SHA-1 instead of SHA-2. So in that case, how do we properly test it at different instances? The amount of support that the API provides for the programmers to test the test security of an application that was developed using an API. So those are the areas a when the security is implemented into the systems, the software developers uh, can use our cognitive dimension framework that we have developed to evaluate the usability of security API. But also, on the other hand, um, security APIs designers and developers, they can use our um, uh, cognitive dimension framework um, to better design security API, um, uh, which makes people to, uh, which are more usable. So um, you can get more information about the paper that we have written here, and we have individually written a few other papers based on the different API stuff. Um, even OWSP used to refer to one of those papers, and which we identify uh, vulnerability, um, uh, this, you know, through this usability issues. If you're interested in, I'm more than happy to share that information. Feel feel free to drop me a line, and I'm happy to share that information. Thanks for listening. Um, thank you, Neilian. Um, I know I said that um, we would have time for a few questions, but I think that um, due to those technical issues, we might have time for. Um, right. just, just one or two before we wrap up. Um, I was wondering, um, personally, just from a documentation perspective, did you find any specific challenges in um, designing documentation that had a sort of security first um, requirement compared to um, other documentation um, um, that the developers encountered? 
Yeah, that's that's an interesting question, and, and <coughs> we haven't looked at, uh, uh, I mean, improving the documentations, but we have identified these um, challenges. Like, for example, um, in OWSP, they talked about uh, they used encoding and escaping stuff, um, and uh, security API. So we found their documentation is, um, you know, they don't interpret. Uh, those words in a proper way because um, encoding, you know, input uh, validations and output validations when they're using encoding and people are mistakenly using encoding and escaping through the documentation because the documentation is written in, in, in not in a way that is usable and that interprets something different to that. So because, and also we need to be able to identify, you know, uh, uh, situations like, you know, how do we Develop the Java database connectivity. Sort of when we looked at the connectivity, and uh, when uh, when we develop that bridge, we are using you know if you have to write a S, um, um, SQL query to fetch the information, what you need to make sure you use uh, statements in you know, a prepared statements rather than statement. Uh, you know all mm. the parameters will be encrypted in that case. Otherwise, so that is susceptible to cross-site scripting attack. Um, uh, or so, and uh, that has that been properly uh, addressed addressed in the documentation because people don't really perceive that's what the interesting point that we have identified through you know mm. uh, and induce uh, you know do you do we understand the whole point of using this API? It's just the functionality. So that's that's important. And when we looked at the documentation, that has not been properly addressed. A because it is not being written having, uh, you know, having programmers who are using their API, they don't have security skills in mind. It's been done, written with, you know, having technical experts who have even more security skills in their mind, you know. So that needs to be properly communicated. Um, I'm sorry, I, uh, I need to cut you off at the end of the, the question I asked you myself um, due to the technical issues. We have to cut this a bit short, um, but thank you very much. And perhaps um, I see that there's another question in the chat, um, perhaps if you were available in the chat or um, you could um, post some details if people wanted to ask you more questions. Right. Um, but thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much. So I'm... Um... So I can't, where can I find the chat? I, I think I need to, okay, yeah. All right. So I, I should type onto the chat, right? Okay. Um, yeah, and, and um, yeah. Uh, people have questions they could ask you there, yeah.